Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this new afternoon broadcast right here on the Riley King Network called U.S. News, International News, Business News, and Political News with Riley King. We're going to be doing this new news broadcast right here on the Riley King Network in the morning, afternoon, and evening. So let's begin this new broadcast. First up, let's take a look at your coronavirus updates. Pandemic far from over, and the world should have listened. Who says the pandemic is far from over? Today's biggest developments. Global cases surpass 3 million. U.S. cases near 1 million. The world should have listened. Who says? NYC doctor who treated corona patients dies by suicide. When each state's stay-at-home order lifts, opening each state will be decided by its governors. With economics and economies in traitors and novel coronavirus cases starting to plummet in many areas of the U.S. Governors are starting to discuss ending stay-at-home orders, many of which have been in place for over a month. But reopening states to business is difficult and coronavirus and controversial topics. Should states reopen too early? Coronavirus cases may spike again, undoing the good social distancing did for weeks. Should they continue to stay closed? Small businesses across the state may never recover and financial crisis could gripple many states. President Donald Trump initially asserted his own authority to reopen states before later dimmed and said governors would act independently with guidance from the federal government. Initial reports warns Zoom could be vulnerable to foreign surveillance. DHS document urges government users to assess their risks. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Well, now to new concerns about Zoom. Homeland Security warning the popular video conferencing program is vulnerable to foreign spies, urging organizations to consider the risk before using it. Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas is in Washington, D.C. with more on this. Good morning, Pierre. Amy, good morning. That's right. Today, Homeland Security is warning law enforcement that Zoom, the highly popular video conferencing service, now 200 million users strong, could be used to eavesdrop on U.S. citizens or for espionage. Homeland Security officials are especially worried about China because Zoom did some of their development there, and Homeland Security claims that China has access to Zoom's servers and could exploit them. But overnight, Zoom telling ABC News that the U.S. government's intelligence is heavily misinformed, and they claim that China's workers do not have the type of access that would allow them to spy. George? Okay, Pierre, thanks very much. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. Stocks fall for the first time in five days, led by Amazon and tech shares. Stocks revised early gains to trade lower on Tuesday as a decline in tech shares offset some of the enthusiasts around the prospect of the state's 
reopening the U.S. economy. Coronavirus pandemic brings staggering losses to colleges and universities. Some already under financial pressure may be forced to close. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. That college decision is getting complicated now for so many American students and their families. Nearly 20 million students projected to enroll in college, many facing May 1st deadlines. But that's a challenge now as colleges and universities are trying to figure out whether and how they can reopen in the fall. Eva Pilgrim is at New York University with the story. Good morning, Eva. Good morning. Yes, yeah, students aren't on campus right now. Most universities finishing up this semester online because of the coronavirus. The question now, though, can those students return in August? As coronavirus forces students to finish the school year at home, some universities are working on a possible plan to hold classes on campus next fall. We would love to have a senior year, but we do worry about what health risks that would pose not only to older people in the community, but to other students like us as well. Indiana's Purdue University making plans to try to bring its community of more than 50,000 students and staff back to campus this August. President Mitch Daniels writing in a school-wide email that COVID-19 poses close to zero lethal threat to students, saying instead our students pose a far greater danger to others than the virus poses to them and vowing to find a way to keep vulnerable groups separate and safe. While I'm not personally at risk, it did seem that they were discounting the potential issues that students who are at risk or who may live with um, immunocompromised family members. Roommates Kaylee Boomensor and Jalen Kelly still concerned about young people who have pre-existing conditions, like Jalen, who struggles with asthma. My fear would be that given the the language used in the email, students wouldn't realize how serious of a situation we're dealing with. Daniels laying out some preliminary practices that would allow the university to reopen, spreading out classes and reducing sizes, pre-testing students and staff for the virus, and using contact tracing and self-quarantining. Brown University's President Christina Paxson also on board, writing in the New York Times, the reopening of college and university campuses in the fall should be a national priority. Institutions should develop public health plans now that build on three basic elements of controlling the spread of infection. Test, trace, and separate. All this as the May 1st deadline, decision day for incoming students, is looming. Many now reconsidering their plans. It's really unappealing to me, the idea of paying for college and doing all of that schoolwork when I'm not able to connect face to face with the people that are teaching me and the people that I'm working with. And she's not alone. Nearly one in six graduating high school seniors are now considering hitting pause on their academic education, looking at taking a gap year. Robin. All right, Eva, thank you. Let's go turn now to our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Jennifer Ashton. She's there at home. Good morning, Jen. This is your wheelhouse. You have a daughter who is a student athlete, no less. What do parents need to know about the possibility of sending their, their children back to school in the fall? Well, Robin, I, this is, first of all, a complex decision. There are a lot of moving parts. The health and safety of the entire college or university community is obviously at the top of the priority list. Um, and we do have to remember that, yes, the risk medically to the college student age group is very, very low. Of course, there are other people's health and risks that we have to consider. But I think it's also important to understand that this decision does not have to be an all or none decision. It can be a hybrid. It can be done in stages or phases. Uh, there can be options, kind of a menu of options for people. And I think it's important to remember also there is a precedent. We have a major medical center in Boston that with the use of masks on everyone in that medical center has demonstrated a massive reduction in the spread of coronavirus. So I think there are a lot of options that could be utilized. And hopefully that they will be, and it's not one size fits all. But you alluded to this a little bit, uh, Jen, because you, you're, you're having 
these students coming from all over the country, some from all over the world, in their dorms, what does that pose to the broader community? Not just there on campus, but these students are going to go out into the community. What kind of problems could that possibly pose? Well, again, I think if you look at what's been going on in this country in cities and states, we can use colleges and universities as a microcosm because they are, in fact, small cities. And when you talk about protecting the most vulnerable, there will be ways that they can do that. And in terms of resilience, ability to adapt, use your capacity and resources and self-regulation, no one better than that than colleges and universities. You said that right. All right, Jen. Thank you so much. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Pentagon disclassifies Navy video that shows a UFO. The Navy video has been leaked in recent years. The Pentagon has disclassified three previously leaked top secret U.S. Navy videos that show a UFO and that some believe could show flying objects in an effort to clear up any misinterpretations by the public on whether or not the footage that has been circulating was real or whether or not there is more to the video, said the Pentagon spokesperson. Now let's take a look at that video and see, and let us know what you think it is. Okay, and there you go. Let us know what you think it is. Comment below and let us know. And that does it for this afternoon edition of U.S. News, International News, Business News, and Political News with Riley King. Thank you for watching this first edition of this new news broadcast. I hope you enjoyed watching and have a great rest of your afternoon. I'll see you back here later on today with more U.S. News, International News, Business News, and Political News. Goodbye, everyone.